Next, we got the plank kettlebell saw. So DJ's gonna go grab a kettlebell. We're gonna use a 50 pound kettlebell here. He needs that amount of resistance, but I love this from an anti-rotational setup. From here, he's got a good base with his feet, kind of trying to create as much symmetry as possible so he's not donating mobility, reaching side to side. And from here, he's just gonna vertically press and pull staying square to the ground, his hips are square to the ground, shoulders are square to the ground, really reaching out, pulling back in. He can speed it up if he wants, he can slow it down if he wants, but just make sure we're not biasing, compensating. Make sure we're equally pushing that right pocket down to the ground and we're not allowing his body to tilt to the left because he's doing this with the right arm. Mike. My opposite forearm. Having that in a 45 degree position, vice 90, yeah, a game change because if not, if I drop it over to 90, I think I can't get a clean pull on the on the kettlebell because you're going off to the side. Yep, and then I have to counter to my arm, have to be farther away because I feel like my entire body leans over the one side. So we do it at 45 off the kettlebell. Like I can use this to brace, but I feel like even on this, I can hold it pretty level. Yeah. What are you cueing to keep your hips square? I know I say that, but what are you internally <laughs> thinking? I'm imagining a plank or a rod going through both my hips and I'm trying to balance it. So as I go to saw, I'm like, a little sense. left pressure, a little right pressure right there. Don't move it. Don't move it. Do you feel the weight shifting in your feet? Yeah. I sometimes when I'm doing it, I'm driving my hips so much that I almost feel like my opposite foot is going to come off the ground. Yep. Okay, cool. Yep. Next, we got a plate sit up. What's up guys, DJ Shipley, tired Navy SEAL. Vernon Griffith, 2024 Tactical Strength and Conditioning Coach of the Year. I've dealt with more injuries and physical limitations than you can possibly imagine. Our five day program will get you out of pain, improve your mobility, strength, and power. This program is not just for operators, but don't take our word for it. The GBRS program has been life changing. It's helped me be consistent and it's been an asset to my weight loss, I've never been in better shape in my life. We have thousands of success stories. There's no reason you can't be the next. Start today with a free seven day trial. I like this setup when it comes to spinal flexion. It's something that we often say, oh, we don't wanna do that. We don't wanna challenge spine. Yes, we do. We wanna be strong there. We wanna be durable. That's a trainable attribute. And I like this movement for this, pairing it with that kettlebell saw, really challenging that anti-rotational flexion extension of the torso. This is a great movement for that. So he's gonna use a plate, He's going to start with his legs kind of wide to give him a little bit of a base. And he's just going to lurch back. So he's going to reach, 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 thinking slow and controlled. And from there, reach, reach, reach up to the ceiling, thinking get as vertical as overhead as possible. Controlling that movement, then reaching straight up to the ceiling. Is this an ab exercise, an abdominal exercise, an approach to training the trunk? Sure. But really, we're looking at challenging the spine. Loading it down, reaching up. Like. What are you thinking about? Controlling the weight the entire time now. Not letting my back smack the floor. Accept the, accept the weight, control it, rebound, but not using momentum. I'm trying to generate from my hips. Oh. Sometimes if I lose it, if I dig my heels in, you can feel my hamstring fire up a little bit, and that's stability to get it up. Instead of creating the momentum with a big pendulum, slow press all the way through. Lower, lower, lower. And a lot of this is keeping pressure on your core. Dig your heels in. Pressure, 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 redirect. Yeah, that's great. DJ mentioned a key word there, momentum. I think that's a big thing with experienced lifters and people that can use it is that's a tool. Oftentimes when you're not highly trained, you kind of rely on it. Oh, I can't get this weight up. Let me jerk it, create some momentum and go, which is a place when we're getting powerful movements, challenging plyometrics. But when you can use that as a tool to, I don't want to use it. I want to be able to control it. Now, when I want to relinquish this, now I can let it go because I've harnessed that capability of that training aspect. I think some of the times I've been hurt the worst is when I use momentum to get it done. Mm. Ego came into it and I was like, I just got to get it up. But if you can't control it, what are you really doing? Yeah. So many muscles are firing, relaxing, contracting, and just everything. It's like just so much having your central nervous system. I think if you just drop the weight and slow it down to control it, you can still make it better out of it. Me personally. It's that whole concept of the weight you may be lifting may be lower but your ceiling for growth is so much higher because you're controlling it now. So maybe you have to take some weight off the bar, but over time you'll be able to put much more weight on the bar because you're building it up from a better base. 